Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn about the new concept that has been introduced in only Angular 19 onwards and which is also in developer preview. That is nothing but incremental hydration. Now we have learned about the full hydration we have seen it. So the latest one has been introduced in the Angular 19 that is nothing but incremental hydration. What is the meaning of this incremental hydration? Let's try to see. So what is it? So what is it means? What is incremental hydration? Incremental iteration is a performance optimization technique in the angular. So it is a performance act optimization technique. So it builds on full application hydration. So that means the full application server side render application is there. So it builds on the full application hydration, which means that instead of hydrating the entire application at once. So normally we have seen the application has been fully hydrated application we have seen. Instead of hydrating the full application at once, it does so incrementally or piece by piece. So that is the main concept of this incremental hydration. So it will be it will be done by entire application uh, at one, instead of having entire application at once, it will be done piece by piece hydration. So why is it useful? So then uh, doing part by part hydration, why it is why is it useful? So first one is the smaller initial bundles reduces the size of the JavaScript bundles that are initially sent to the browser. So it will reduce the size of the JavaScript bundles that are initially sent to the browser. This decreases the initial page load time, which is crucial for performance. That is one thing. And also improved performance metrics. So first input delay measures the time from when a user interacts with the site. Example, click say button to when the browser responds smaller bundles mean quicker interaction. <clears throat> so first input delay also, it will improve it. So this all comes in the core web vitals actually your website if you want to check it. Cumulative layout shift. The layout shift is also one of the important factors which you need to consider when you are doing the website uh, design. Measures unexpected layout shifts. Incrementally, incremental hydration helps avoid these shifts, especially with the deferrable views. So we have learned about this different concept. Full application hydration. In Angular, hydration refers to making a server rendered application interactive by attaching the event listeners and enabling the dynamic features on the client side. In full application hydration, this process happens all at once. So this one we have seen it. Limitations of the full hydration. So what are the limitations of the full hydration? First one is the larger JavaScript bundles and content loading above the fold, the visible part of the page can result in the layout shifts if placeholder content is replaced dynamically. So that is one thing. So differable views. So at the rate differ, what is this one? At the rate differ is a mechanism to load parts of the application lazily. It allows developers to specify parts of the UI that can be loaded later depending on certain conditions or triggers. So before incremental hydration, how it look like? If differ content is placed above the fold means the placeholder would render first followed by the main content causing the layout shift. This is actually we have already learned about this uh, uh, differ, differ block concept we are learning. So before incremental hydration, we used to have a differ content. And whenever the differ content is there means first the placeholder would load first, would render first, followed by the main content causing the layout shift. So with incremental hydration, Angular ensures that the main template of the differ block is rendered during hydration without placeholder transitions avoiding the layout shift automatically without loading the placeholder uh, placeholder automatically with, with the incremental hydration, the content main content will be loaded automatically. So enabling the incremental hydration, what are the prerequisites we need to enable the incremental hydration? First one is the server side rendering. So the application should be server side rendering. This ensures that application is rendered on the server and sent as HTML to client for faster initial display. Follow Angular SSR, SSR guide to enable this is, uh, Angular SSR application. And hydration. So ensures the server render app becomes interactive on the client side. Follow Angular hydration guide for setup. And how to enable the incremental hydration? Use the provide client hydration function from Angular platform role. Pass in that provide client hydration with incremental hydration configuration to it. So this is the how you will be passing it. So like this, you will be having in our app.config.ts file. So bootstrap application app component will be there. Sorry. And here in the providers, you will be providing this provide client hydration. And in this one inside, you will be providing the with incremental hydration. So what happens when it is enabled? Angular uses the incremental hydration instead of the full hydration. Event replay covered. So we have learned about this event replay, right? So it is enabled automatically where there is no need to enable it especially. So what is the event replay? So I will try to recap this event replay thing. A mechanism that queues browser events triggered by the user example clicks input before they before hydration completes and replace them once hydration is finished. So we already discussed about this one in our previous video. So for example, let's say that when the 
server renders the HTML, when server sends the HTML to the client, automatically the, the HTML will be rendered to the browser. But when the user before hydration, if he clicks or something, if he does some user interaction to this one, those all, those all will not be uh, triggered. So afterwards, if you use this event replay, so after the hydration is completed, so those all the events which are the user has interacted, it will be replayed. So that is the thing. But when you enable this with incremental hydration, automatically event replay also is will be enabled. So there is no need to especially mention this with event replay. That is what I am trying to say. I am trying to tell. Why is it important? Without event replay, users may interact with the page before hydration finishes, leading to unresponsive behavior. So this is one thing. So relation to the incremental hydration. Incremental hydration automatically enables the event replay. If you were previously using with event replay means you can remove it once the, the incremental hydration is enabled. So there is no need to use the with event replay. Hydrate triggers. What are they? Triggers define when deferred content should be hydrated, loaded and made interactive. So example triggers will be scrolling into view, user interactions like clicks. So just like the defer how you will be having the incremental hydrations also you can uh, make the triggers also for that one. So like interaction, hover like that we can do it. I will try to explain you those all the things with examples. So just I am trying to tell you the triggers also av uh, available just like the differ block how it will be having the trigger types those will be there. How do they work with incremental hydration? During server side rendering angular loads and renders the main template of the differ block instead of the placeholder. That is one thing. So directly when you are trying to go to a particular page means server renders the HTML. Instead of rendering the placeholder the server side when you are trying to use it automatically the main content the differ block main content will be delivered. During client side rendering, dependencies for differ content are deferred and stay inactive until the page fires. Once the trigger fires, fetch dependencies, hydrate the content and replay any queued events. So that is one thing. So how does incremental hydration work? Core principle, combines existing features, build on full hydration, deferable views and event replay. So this one is incremental hydration is build on full hydration, deferable views and also the event replay. So defines hydration boundaries. What are the boundaries for this hydration? Using differ block with hydrate it triggers angular hydrates only the required parts. Renders main template early. Prevents placeholder content from being displayed reducing the layout shift. So this is one thing. So optimized client side behavior. Dependencies are only fetched and hydrated when needed. Saving resources and improving the load times. So the total thumb summary of this incremental hydration is incremental hydration is a significant performance improvement in angular focusing on smaller initial bundles for faster loads. Avoiding the layout shift using the differ with hydrate tickets ensuring seamless user interaction through event replay. This optimization is crucial for applications that lead to balance performance and interactivity especially when dealing with the large complex US. So this is all about the basic concept of this incremental hydration. So whenever you are having a full application, instead of using the full hydration concept and all those things. So if you want to incrementally hydrate the application means then this incremental hydration will be very much useful. Right now in Angular 18, it is in the developer preview. So if you want to use it means you can use it without any issue. So hope you understood about this concept of incremental hydration. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.